Joining us now is Mr. Vijay Tanwar. He's, he's a director with the Rimkus Consulting Group, and his expertise is in visual media and technology. And he's got more than 15 years of experience in forensic visualization, graphics, and video for litigation. Uh, we're very anxious to see this, Vijay. Thank you for joining us. Please welcome VJ Tanwar. Thank you, uh, Stephen. Uh, this morning has been great. We've listened to so many interesting uh, presentations, and hopefully, this would be, you know, another one of the presentation that you would like. So, before we begin the presentation, um, Which one is the button? Uh, okay. <clears throat> so before we uh, begin the presentation, I would like to start with this short video. We call this a CSI effect. So uh, this video will be pretty interesting. It's going to tie things together, and I think it's going to make some uh, make sense when you when you watch this video. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, bump up the volume. Mm -hmm. What's that? This is an enhancement program. Can you clear that up, Benny? I don't know. Let's enhance it. Enhance section A6. I enhance the detail and. That's the reflection in her eye. Let's run this through video enhancement. Edgar, can you enhance this? Hang on. I've been working on this reflection. Someone's reflection. Reflection. There's a reflection of the man's face. A reflection. There's a reflection. Zoom in on the mirror. You can see a reflection. Can you enhance the image from here? Can you enhance it right here? Can you enhance it? Can you enhance it? Can we enhance this? Can you enhance it? Hold on a second, I'll enhance it. Zoom in on the door. Times 10. Zoom. Zoom in more. Wait, stop. Stop. Pause it. Rotate a 75 degrees around the vertical, please. Stop. Go back to the part about the door again. We've got an image enhancer that can fit that. The right combination of algorithms. Lock on. Enlarge the Z axis. Enhance. Enhance. Yeah, so. What's that? You know, a lot of times when I tell people what we do, almost half of them always say, oh, yeah, something similar to the CSI or that Hollywood movie they saw. And I always tell them, yeah, I'm not really, <clears throat> you know, uh, but, you know, if you look at, you know, past five to 10 years, we've seen a rapid growth in video surveillance. Uh, this is one of the reasons why the probability of having a video evidence in one of her cases have increased. You know, we've become comfortable with the technology, uh, you know, social media, everybody's carrying a smartphone. So, you know, five, 10 years ago where it was probably 50-50 where you would find a video of the incidents. Now, you know, it's probably 70 and maybe 80%, uh, percent. you know, sometimes, uh, you know, you'll find, um, you know, video evidence. Uh, so we've seen that, you know, increase. Um, the other thing to uh, keep in mind is, you know, as video is becoming more and more, uh, you know, uh, important, it's, under, it's important to understand how the video plays out. You know, video is not always what it appears to be. Uh, we've all heard the phrase, you know, picture is worth a thousand words, which is, which is correct. But which picture are you looking at? You know, if you change, just for an example, if you change your frame rate on a video, um, it might change the, the outcome of how the, the video appears. So, you know, that thing, uh, you know, you have to keep in mind that the uh, frame rates can change the appearance of the video. <clears throat> and also, uh, it's uh, important or, you know, it's important to understand the limitations of your, uh, of your video. Um, uh, y y enhancements and analysis does not create anything new. It's only bringing out the information that is already there. You know, one of uh, a few years ago, one of the clients asked me, like, you know, can we 
move the camera from, from one location to another and see a different view from the other side. And I had to tell them uh, that's not possible because we only have one uh, angle. So it's important to understand, you know, the limitations of your video uh, evidence. Now let's talk about, you know, video enhancement a little bit. You know, what is video enhancement? You know, a lot of times we get a proprietary player file or a generic format fly file from our clients. And these files are generally low quality. Uh, maybe they're dark. Some of them are too bright. Uh, you know, sometimes they are, uh, you know, moving, shaking a lot. Uh, sometimes the point of interest or the incidents happened all the way to the right side or, you know, somewhere far from the camera view. Now, what we do is we take this video and we put it in our enhancement software where we apply some filters where, you know, we change, um, not change, but we, but we work with uh, contrast we try to take out the shadows. If it's too light, we try to make it dark. Uh, we stabilize, uh, you know, the video. Uh, sometimes we need to zoom in 200%, maybe 300% to, to bring the point of interest closer to us. Once we apply the filter, then we export out the, the video. This exported out video is called as the enhanced video. This video is, is sharpened. We've adjusted the contrast. Uh, you know, the resolution is a little bit better. It's stabilized. Um, <clears throat> just to give you an example, uh, here's, here's a, two images, you know, one image on the left side, pretty dark. That's the original image where you can hardly tell what's happening in this image. Uh, on the right side, you have the same image, but pass through the enhancement filter. And on the right side, you can, you can see, yes, this looks like an elevator and you can see, you know, somebody, uh, you know, standing there. Now this information was already there in the original video. Um, it's just that after applying the enhancement filters, this information came out. So again, you know, enhancement does not create any information. It simply brings out the details uh, if those, uh, you know, uh, details are there in the, in the video or the image. Now let's talk about the, um, you know, video analysis. You know, what is video analysis? The way I look at it, you know, you can probably look at it as an onion skin where the first level is, you know, video enhancement. It's simply basically working with the video, trying to make it a little bit better. Video analysis is a little bit deeper where, you know, simply put, um, you are, um, video analysis is scientific examination, comparison, and or evaluation of video in a legal matter. Uh, you're basically taking a little bit deeper dive into a video. You're trying to uh, understand the information. Is it accurate? Uh, has the video been modified or tweaked or is it authentic? We try to uh, look at the frame rates. You know, were the frame rates same as the original video? We try to identify the, uh, the chain of uh, custody where we're trying to establish the authenticity of the video. Sometimes we even go uh, in a deeper level and we try to uh, identify the pixels. You know, sometimes we work with the compression artifacts to see if uh, there is something in the video or it's just some kind of a compression artifact that happened when you compress the video. Um, uh, at times we also look at uh, camera, camera angles or camera views from one set uh, of, of cameras versus the other, you know, sometimes those cameras might be in a different location where, you know, one set of cameras are from, 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 from this business. And then the other set of cameras are from the business down the street where we're, we're, where you're trying to tie the sequence of events together. You know, for example, like, um, you know, in a bar fight where you're trying to, you know, look at the, look at the videos from uh, outside then you're trying to look at the videos from inside and you're trying to establish, uh, you know, individuals who are present, uh, you know, in one footage versus the other, right? So basically video analysis, you know, help identify the who, what, when, where, and why of the case. Uh, 
let's look at a let's look at a quick uh, ex example of you know video analysis. I'm going to play the video. We might have to play this a couple of times. Uh, so let's play the video. Um, can you play it? Just play it one more time, please. So as you can see, like you know, it's a it's a real time clip. Happened so fast, you can hardly see what's happening. But um, but it was it was alleged that the the gang members always just keep a pocket knife with them. You know, once we analyzed the video, we uh, we extracted the frames, we enhanced the clip, um, we kind of you know zoomed in on the. Um, uh, on the knife that the uh, gang member was holding, uh, you can clearly see that this knife is a little bit uh, bigger than than a regular pocket knife. So the uh, so the video enhance uh, video analysis can add you know a lot of a uh, uh, lot of benefit and uh, it can bring in a lot of a lot of good details, right? <clears throat> so now let's look at a. Look at a case study uh, where uh, you know this was a security video that captured a fall, and this is going to be um, showing you some information of how 3D uh, 3D animation or 3D modeling can be tied to to video uh, for for analysis purposes. So let's play the video. <clears throat> And I'm gonna play it one more time so you can see what's what's happening. Can we please play it again? Okay, so this was a case where, you know, uh, the people were coming out of, you know, a restaurant after having the dinner and as they were walking, uh, the uh, the lady who was uh, wearing the rain cap, you know, as she's going, uh, reaching the edge of the stairs, she loses her balance and she falls. And the claim was that she was reaching for the railing, but the but the planter um, blocked her access to the railing. So that was the uh, that was the claim. So now let's look at the the evidence as to you know. What exactly happened? So, oh, sorry. Can you go back and play this video again? <clears throat> okay. So now, as we look at the the video, keep an eye on the on the lady wearing the rain cap. You know, she's coming out. Uh, she's she's walking, and then as she's reaching the edge of the of the stairs, she loses her balance. Now let's rewind it a little bit. And you can see the last frame where you can see her shoe. Now, you know, did plant block subjects access to the handrail? That was the that was the question. And uh, in this video, we kind of noticed that it had a unique uh, the outside had a unique tile pattern. And in this video, this worked for us. In some other video, there might be something else that might work for us. So you just have to you know look look at each video on its own. But in this one, the tile worked for us. So we looked at the tile and we figured out, you know, we can probably identify where she is keeping her foot. And um, what we did was we traced the, the tile pattern on the, on the video. Then we had one of our consultants go to the site. Uh, they, they inspected the site. They created a very detailed hand sketch of the, of the environment. And um, with this field sketch, uh, and the dimensions, we were able to create a CAD model or, or a CAD drawing. So from the video, we did the inspection. From the inspection hand notes, we created the CAD drawing. And with this CAD drawing, we were able to get some really good you know, measurements. The, the red dot that you're seeing there was, was, her, uh, was her foot. So you can clearly see that you know she's she's four and a half feet, more than four and a half feet away from the railing, and um, the next step was you know we we can probably 
look at the video, take the hand sketch, take the CAD, and we can create like a 3D. Can you play this on the file? So once you put all these things together, you can um, you can create a 3D environment that matches exactly to the uh, the scale of the real environment, and then you can keep the uh, the virtual person in, in the exact same spot, and you can then see you know exactly what happened. You know she was not trying to reach for the railing, and the railing was uh, you know uh, more than four feet away from from her. So the planter, the original claim that, you know, I was trying to reach and the planter was there, you know, because, because of that, I couldn't hold the railing. Uh, that was not the case. So this helped our clients quite a bit. Um, so in the closing, I would just say, um, you know, uh, aim of video enhancement is to improve the visual appearance of the video don't judge the original video. Like, you know, if you have, if you have a video, uh, you know, pass it over to your enhancement experts, they might be able to, you know, uh, uh, put some light on it that might, uh, you know, help your, help your case. Video analysis, enhancement, enhancements, and 3D animation can provide valuable information beneficial to your case. And then uh, last, uh, you know, CSI effect is mostly for movies and uh, television. And I think with this, my presentation is, is finished. Uh, you know, thank you for your time and uh, any questions, I'm you know, happy to answer. Thank you, Vijay. That's fascinating. <laughs> so Vijay, just to start us off, what are the biggest mistakes you see businesses make with their camera installations or the types of cameras that they use? Can you talk about that a little bit? Is that a fair question? Yeah, yeah. A lot of times, you know, we see maybe the, uh, the cameras are not updated. Maybe the dates are, are wrong. Sometimes you even see that, you know, the lobby camera might have 8 a.m. or, you know, the, the dining cameras might have a different time. So basically they've never been serviced. They've never been, you know, uh, maybe properly maintained. So that's, that's one, uh, you know, uh, we see quite a bit. The second one is the, is the resolution of the, of the videos, but that's a, that's a business decision because the heavier the video, the crisper the video, the more storage space you need. So businesses have to make a very calculated decision as to, you know, what resolution we, we need to save our, our files. So, so sometimes we see like a lower resolution video, but we understand that that's because of, you know, uh, a business decision. And, and so the, on the storage side, but today with the cloud, is that, that's still an issue though, right? Because video takes up so much space. Is that it does take so much space. You higher know, resolution. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, there are some systems out there who, who, uh, you know, save the, uh, the videos like on the cloud, but there are still some systems, uh, which are still like a DVR style systems that, that still have, you know, that storage on their personal you know, computer. Somewhere in this hotel, there might be, there might be a, like a security room somewhere. You know, you'll have a lot of computers and I'm sure you'll have, you'll have, a, you'll have a hard drive space there, you know. So, so, so we see both, you know, some of them are moving to the cloud, but then a lot of them are still maintaining, you know, right. disk uh, files. All right, so I'm gonna put you on the spot here for just a second. Sure. Uh, if you were going, if you had a business, let's say a restaurant, and you were going to install cameras, what would you install and where would you install them? Well, the, there's a lot of like, you know, good. Um, it's okay to mention brands. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to, we're your consumer reports right now. Yeah. No, they're, they're, you know, good, uh, good cameras, you know, good quality cameras, you know, uh, you know, they're available. Uh, it's you have to when you place the cameras. You have to you have to kind of you know work with your uh, I guess your IT. You have to work with your security teams and kind of figure out you know where uh, where it makes more sense, right? So there's no no need to have three cameras in one spot that are looking in the same direction versus you know 
uh, one, one spot, just having one, one camera. The other thing also you can, uh, you can kind of uh, think about is um, if you're having a lot of you know, uh, uh, complaints about a certain things in a, in a certain area, that might be something to focus on, you know, like, like bars, you know, tends, tendencies to kind of, you know, sometimes they have fights or they have arguments, you know, maybe that area needs to be focused a little bit more. You know, so it just kind of depends. Is there, is there a minimum resolution that they should think about? Um, I mean, you know, we've seen, uh, you know, 320 uh, by 240, you know, as small as that as well. You know, and then we've seen, you know, HD quality. So it's just a, just a balance of, you know, where the business feels that, you know, uh, uh, from the enhancement side uh, or the analysis side, if the video frames are too low, like say, for example, five frames or maybe, you know, lower than that, we've, we've even seen one frame per second. Uh, that doesn't help us, you know, because the, all the details are gone, right? So, but if you have, you know, 15 frames per second, uh, then you can, you know, look at, look at the video and you can get some details. So I wouldn't go as far as, you know, one frame, but I wouldn't even go, you know, 30 frames or 60 frames. Okay. Thank you. How difficult is it in court and to a jury for a plaintiff to say that your enhancement actually manipulated the video and get it thrown out? Yeah. Do you so, always keep the original? Of course, of course. You always keep the original, and you follow all the protocols. You follow. You document all the steps, and you basically hand that over to you know uh, to your counsel. And you know uh, the other side will have that too. And you know if their exports wants to replicate the same thing, they are free to do that. I mean, you you've documented. You've forensically you know verified everything. So each step on the enhancement side or the analysis side that you're doing has to be documented, you know. So, Are you always in court explaining this process? Not always, but sometimes <laughs> you have to, you know, you have to do that, but that's that's all right. Jacob, do you have anything to add to that on the proving it up? Yeah. Speaking of putting people on the spot. <laughs> Since we're all friends here, G generally speaking, it's kind of a data dump. Uh, I think that we normally have somebody like uh, VJ come in and say, for example, on a lighting issue, um, uh, I had an expert similar to VJ come in and we dumped like, I think 7,000 photos because they do the, the laid, you know what I mean? And they calibrate the different parts of the photos and so on and so forth. And by the time you dump somebody at 7,000 some odd pictures on a plaintiff's attorney there, they're not really going to question it after that. <laughs> <clears throat> thank you. Vijay, thank you very much for joining us today. Fascinating. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.